It's official. I have found my new favorite clothing brand, Marine Layer. Their stuff is so soft and it makes for the perfect gift. To spread a little holiday cheer, my listeners get an exclusive 15% discount. Just head to marinelayer.com slash chael15. Honestly, you can get all of your holiday shopping done at Marine Layer. They have amazing gifts for guys and gals, like beanies, overshirts, sweats, and tees. You name it, Marine Layer's got it. I'll be getting some very sweet stuff for my whole family this holiday season. The Signature Crew Tee is my favorite Marine Layer find, but the Winter Archive Collection has really caught my eye. It's super vintage, ski-inspired, with a ton of bright colors. The best part? They have free shipping and returns for an entire year. No questions asked, so I don't have to worry about getting somebody the wrong size or the wrong color or anything like that. I think we can all agree that great gifts can be hard to find. Look no further than Marine Layer. For a limited time, get 15% off at marinelayer.com slash chael15, or just click on the link below. Colby Leon, what happened? I mean, what happened? It's been a few days. What happened? So, I've got to give Leon praise right off the bat, and this is from a personal standpoint. When I used to compete, I put a lot of focus and attention into the mental side, and post-college, when I look back on my time as an athlete in college, most of my regrets came from the mental side, whatever that might be. But the approach, and then they, you know, they put out books on this. I started working with Dr. Ed Versteg and sports psychologist. We even did some things through hypnosis. I had a point in my MMA career, I had been dominant, absolutely dominant. And I'd lost a handful of fights, but I was whipping them all. And then as I looked a little closer, this is right on SureDog.com, right? This is, this is me, but I don't know this about myself until I look at it. I lost them all in the second round. Well, what a weird coincidence that would be. And they were all by submission. And they weren't like to some great submission guy. I had been through Abu Dhabi twice at that point and had never been submitted. But all of a sudden, I'm getting submitted in, in matches. Going through practices and wasn't getting submitted, but I'm getting submitted in matches. I realized, no, I, I don't have a physical problem. I have a mental problem. I don't know what it is. My point to you is I put a lot of focus on that. And I would always be in my hotel, cutting weight and getting down to 185. Just be this miserable experience. But I would really take inventory of what I was up against. I'm a two and a half to one underdog. Or sometimes it, it, there's a short notice fight. I've only known about it for eight days. and different situations where it was the crowd doesn't believe in you or you are fully aware from a logical standpoint that you are not at your best because you didn't have time. I mean, it's one of these things, but how am I going to deal with it? I still got to win. One time I had a broken arm. How am I going to do that? What strategy am I going to have? I still have to find a way to win. And I would find myself in, in unusually difficult circumstances at least within my own mind. But then I would realize what an opportunity that was. If I can overcome this, then I have won. This battle that I've had since college, this battle to overcome the mental side, if I can overcome it for this, I will have won. I'll never have to doubt myself again. But then each match, it would present something new. Something new. You never know that your arm's going to be hurt. You didn't know you were going to get called on eight days' notice. But there would always be something. There would also always be a challenge. I say that because let's look at Leon's last three. Okay. The head kick hurt around the world. This is a fight that Leon had lost mathematically, right? His fight with Kamara Usman, all he had to do was beat the clock. He does not have to beat Kamara. He does not have to punch Kamara again. I apologize. Kamara doesn't need to punch Leon again. He just needs to run out the clock. And Leon was exhausted. And Dean Thomas weighed in with a special commentary. And Dean, who was a great athlete, but he was an even better coach, came in from a coaching perspective. 
of what he saw with an athlete in between rounds in the corner. And he was talking about Leon. And Dean openly, and it was critical, but he was spot on and he had the courage to say it. Leon was no longer trying to win that fight. He was just trying to get through the fight. Fine. As an audience member, I hope that I've explained that well, but as an athlete, I knew exactly what Dean was talking about, and he was, that's exactly what was happening. So somewhere within that, he changed his mind, even if for a split second, set up a kick, threw it, won a world championship. So that, that's a lot to overcome, but that's what he overcame that night. So he would be able to go back, you talk about building confidence, be able to go back and tell himself, no matter how bad things are, I can still try and I can still do it. Great. Well, now they're going to take him home. All right, for the trilogy fight with Kamar Usman, his first title defense, his first time making actual money. And they're going to take him home. And in every sport, there's a home field advantage. There's a very good reason why the Super Bowl doesn't get played in one of the team's home stadiums. It is such an advantage. In every sport, that's true, except this one. It is a home field disadvantage. The pressures that are put on an athlete at times are insurmountable. At times he, he will underperform and nearly never will they overperform due to the raw innovation of a hometown crowd. And I would submit for you that that was Leon's best performance. Notwithstanding what he just did with Covington over the weekend, I believe the third fight with Kamara to be Leon's best performance, regardless of outcome. They could have raised Kamara's hand. I would still submit for you that Leon had the best showing of his career that night. So it was another thing. It was another mental thing that he overcame. And now let's go in to this weekend. Leon lost his temper, which Leon never does. Leon threw something at Colby. I thought it was a water, but I read it was the microphone. Things got so heated, they ended the press conference. That is not a way that Leon behaves. Leon then shares with us that he was in tears behind the scenes out of anger. But he knew, he knew he's got to bring himself down. And that is a trick that very few athletes know. That is a trick that very few coaches know. That's a, a trick that absolutely no parent knows. I coach kids. I'm around parents all the time. I will have dads walk up to the kid mat side right before we're going to walk onto the mat and tell the kid, get psyched up. There is no such thing. You damn sure can get psyched out, but you can't get psyched up. And Leon knew he was psyched and he knew he had to bring it down. See, that's the trick. People always try to go up. Sometimes you got to pull that emotion down. And that was the test that he had, right? When I talked to you about when I personally was in hotel rooms and I'd start taking inventory of what am I facing this time? Well, those were three very unique and very difficult challenges mentally that Leon had. And he passed the test three times. Now, when we look at the actual fight, First off, Leon is better than we knew that he was. And you guys have been singing the Leon praises for years. I mean, way back to, to COVID time, when everything got shut down. So was that 2020 and you guys were saying, hey, he should be fighting for a title. And you guys did a great job of defending and inserting Leon. And he was not doing a great job of defending and inserting himself. He was doing a great job of getting his hand raised, but he wasn't doing a great job of bringing interest. And there was very good reason why Leon could win six in a row and seven in a row and eight in a row and not get a title fight when Kamara Usman is still the champion. See, that was a rematch, and a lot of the audience didn't know that. Kamara won Kamara at the time they fought. Leon won Leon at the time they fought. So a lot of people didn't know that was a rematch, but Dana does. He's going, hey, I did a few rounds of this. Leon didn't win any of those rounds. I, I don't. It doesn't really matter how many he won in between. I can't just go repackage this match, right? Like, I mean, there's a couple of challenges. That when you look back at the timeline, you have to make sure that you know. Leon goes out and he fights. And he was even able to find takedowns. And the great intangible is Colby's pace. 
That was the intangible when he was 11 years old. That was an intangible in the Pac-10 finals. That was an intangible in the NCAA quarterfinals. It's an intangible in every single fight that he has had. His pace. And Leon was aware of it. And Leon spoke on it, and he was worried. He openly said that before the fight. I am a better fighter. I can beat him here, here, and here. This is Leon talking. But his cardio is intimidating. So I say that because Leon held up. And Leon never started to do math, and he never started to take inventory, right? I mean, once he had three rounds secured, he did not begin to eat up clock and sail in the next two rounds. He tried to win those two. And then he's out there challenging himself to take the decorated wrestler down, which nobody to my memory has done. I don't remember anybody getting on top of Colby. So a very good performance by Leon. No way around it. Let's look at the other side. Colby, what happened? And that, I have not seen that Colby fight before. I have not seen that Colby in a wrestling match. I have not seen that Colby in a practice room. But one thing that I admired that I don't want you guys to miss, he never said what it was. And he never will. There was something. He was dealing with something. Something wasn't feeling right. Something wasn't as it should be. And he never made an excuse. He never said anything about it. Not before the fight, not after the fight. And that's a new thing with fighters, man. If they can get an x-ray or an MRI or be in the emergency room or say, I lied to the commission, ha, ha, ha. And believe me, the commission will do nothing. You can lie to that commission all you want out there in Nevada. They will do nothing if you lie on a form and swear on a stack of Bibles that your body is willing and able. And then come out and say, I fooled you guys. They will do nothing. And every fighter does it, but Colby did not. Within that fight, and early in that fight, Colby felt something that we couldn't see. I don't know what that was. And I went back, and I was watching those first few minutes. I was watching those few, first few minutes. And there is times that Leon changes stance. He goes from orthodox to southpaw. But Colby's dealt with all that before. Leon didn't throw anything that Colby hasn't had thrown at him. Right? I mean, you got a one and a two, and you got a kick over this way, and He's going to move this way. He's going to bob his head a little bit. There was it, it was very much by the numbers. It was a very basic, which is what the greats do. The champions win on the basics. But there was still something. And it could have been range. Leon could have been standing. Just for example, when I tell you there was something Colby felt, Leon could have been standing a quarter inch outside of range. But there was something where Colby wasn't getting the looks that he wanted. So he kept moving. He kept moving. He kept trying to buy. He kept trying to buy time. Time's ticking down. He takes a shot. He's moving around. He's, try he's trying to create something. He's looking for something that he never found. I don't know what that was. And Colby, after the fight, the closest he came to an excuse, and I didn't find it to be an excuse at all. I thought he answered the question very honestly. He said, man, I haven't been here in a long time. And then to remedy that, to fix that, to, to learn from his mistake, he wasted no time in calling out Wonderboy. And there's a real message in that. When Colby tells you, man, I have some ring rust, I haven't been here in a long time, I would like to know why he hasn't. I know that he tried. I mean, I know he flew out to England nine months ago to do a fight and did a full training camp for it. And what was the delay? Who was the one that held that match up? It's not meant to be salacious over an overly big deal. I'm just curious, and generally, something so simple would be revealed to us, the audience, but it never was in this case. It's been revealed to us countless times that every fighter gets three fights per year. Well, there's a champion, and he got two. But per the contract that's been revealed to us, he has to be offered three. So was he offered the third, or was there a breach? I'm good with it either way, but if he was offered a fight, when was he offered the fight? And what did he say? And why did he not do it? And for Colby to learn from that on the spot, openly acknowledge. And that's another thing that would lend to my example of not being able to quite find that range. That's one of the things that go. When you talk about ring rust, 
It's a very hard thing to define. But a lot of it is just your eyes. Your eyes don't see it because it's a different speed than anything you can duplicate in the practice room. So to learn from the mistake and to show the sincerity, Colby wasted no time in saying, I've made a mistake once. I'm not going to make it again. I'm going to rebook and I'm going to get right after it. And in this case, it was with Wonderboy. There was even a criticism given to Leon about him reverting to tactics that he had not generally used before, which was specifically the takedowns. But I, I don't see that same criticism. I thought it was a compliment. I don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging when somebody does a good job and you tip your hat to them. So what? But if I can openly tell you, having seen Colby compete for the first time at 11 years old, having been in the practice room and even been a training partner of his, having seen every fight that he's had, most of them live, that was the worst Colby I've ever seen. I've just simply never seen that Colby. And he still went 25 minutes easily. Could have got another 25 with the best guy in the world. And it feels to you like this is the time to kick sand in a guy's face. On your best day, you couldn't go 25 minutes with Leon. He did it easily on his worst. So think about that. Just think about that. 